Alright, what's going on you guys, man? Welcome back to yet another King Japes video. Now today, as you guys can read by the title, we are going thrifting for film cameras. And you guys, this year has probably been, <laughs> what? This year has probably been one of the hardest years to find film cameras, which is the increase in popularity. Number one, people are out there getting those steals as well. But two, these thrift stores are starting to make it more difficult to get more of these deals. And so our goal today is to just find film cameras only. It's been a minute since I found really anything good in the thrifts and so I'm really going to try to hit as many stores as possible. I am actually in a town that I don't even really know about myself purely with the intention to thrift. But before we get started you guys, if you want to support this channel in the most absolute free way, drop a like down below that really goes a long way to show that you enjoy these thrift videos and that you guys want to see more. And if you guys also want to watch more of these episodes, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Again, it means a ton to me. So without further ado you guys let's get into these thrift stores and hopefully today we could find something good let's go So something about these smaller thrift stores, you guys, is you got to look at every single little corner, especially in the electronic section, because sometimes, you know, I found cameras tucked away in spaces like this or really just anywhere that is hidden. So just a little tip here for anybody that does go thrifting for film cameras. All right, so just as tradition, the first spot is a bust, but luckily there is another spot in the town here, so we are gonna try that out right now. Let's go. Go off! <laughs> go off! Let's go! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Shouts Shout out to Maple Leaf Donuts in Fremont. That's the plug! <sighs> Looking like a bust. All right, so this is supposed to be a tried and true spot. Every time I come here, I have zero luck. And so I'm not even gonna have expectations. Let's just get in there, man. It's been a tough day so far. We have zero fines after I think four different thrift stores. So let's see what's going on. Thank you. White, yellow, and blue. Yellow, white, so green, and blue. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> All right, guys, check this out. We got a Nikor mat or Nico mat. Interesting. El with a 50 millimeter 1.4 Nikor lens. Now, honestly, guys, this one looks like it's in really good condition. Um, and so far, it's firing at every shutter speed. So let me try this out here. All right, so one thing that I'm reading online is that this camera has a mechanical shutter of 1 90th of a second when the battery is exhausted and that it has a electronic shutter. So right now, guys, this is looking like a really good deal. The 51.4, the Nikromat EL, and they're asking $39 for it. So I think it's a winner. Hopefully we can try this out with a battery later and it works great. I think we're going to get it, guys. It's in way too good condition. To pass up. I mean, check that thing out, guys. Holy smokes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, we almost just witnessed an accident, but this was, you guys, the first time we ever came out of this particular store. 
with something because every time I go here it seems to be extremely extremely dry uh, this is a town that I am not from and so going out here usually is not worth the trip but today holy smokes this is an insane find I cannot wait to show you guys when we get back home but the day you guys is still not yet over we have a ton of other stores we have still planned to go to so we're gonna head there now it's gonna be a little bit of a drive but until then you guys stay tuned till the very end Yo, 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 real quick, for anybody that lives in the Bay Area, every time I go through Oakland, there's always this loft building space right here that looks dope. It's kind of like in this industrial setting. Does anybody know if people actually live there? I keep seeing people like, or I keep seeing signs say like for sale, or not for sale, for rent and whatnot, but it looks like a dead place. It looks like nobody kind of lives in there, but just imagine, imagine having like an art studio there, like a photography studio, somewhere to film. I think that would be one of the dopest spots ever in my opinion. So I don't know how well you guys can hear me because of the audio, we are in the car, we are driving at the moment. If you guys remember my buddy Gable from a couple of videos ago where we did like the Chinatown thing, but also did like the $10 point and shoot digital camera. So Gable and I are planning a trip to New York in sometime in May probably. So if you guys want to meet up in New York, if you guys want to do anything, any suggestions, maybe even like a meetup or a photo walk, let me know in the comment section down below to all of our New York peeps, anybody on the East Coast. Uh, let's get some down, let's get some together, and let's have some fun out there. I am very, very excited to go out in New York, shoot some street photography with everybody out there in New York. So huge shout out to the New York peeps. But right now we are in Oakland. I don't know if you guys could see that here in the distance, but we are on the way to the next thrift stop. Let's go. All right, you guys, so we are back home now and we just came from the store and we bought this gigantic cutting board. Now, the reason why I have this gigantic cutting board is because this is gonna be a very special edition of a thrift vlog where I kind of do a mukbang and talk about the camera that we picked up as well as some of my favorite film cameras that I have been enjoying in the last couple of weeks. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what a mukbang is, basically you take some food, whatever it may be, you put it up on the cutting board and essentially you just eat while you talk. It could really be anything. Some people do true crime, some people do reviews. Today we're talking about film cameras. Now, just a quick warning, this is not for the week. So if you don't like the sounds of somebody eating, you might want to click out pretty soon here because we're about to get this thing started. But for those of you guys who do know about them and enjoy them, definitely stay tuned so that you guys can see the film cameras. Before we get started, man, huge shout out to all of the YouTubers who actually do mukbangs for a living. It's a lot harder than I thought it was. Way harder than I thought it was, you guys. I don't even know the lighting, the setup right here, the mic. All right, you guys, like we said, this is my first ever time trying this or attempting it. Uh, but in front of me, let me tell you guys what we have going on. So basically we have the Korean fire noodles right here. If you guys don't know what that is, it's some of the spiciest ramen you could get. Now I opted for the quattro cheese and so that is what this is right here. I also have some leftover KFC and no, it's not Kentucky fried chicken, it's Korean fried chicken. And this one right here, this red one is in the puldak sauce, which is like a very spicy sauce. Uh, kind of same flavor as the ramen here. And then we also have just some regular fried chicken as well. But without further ado, you guys, cheers. Let's dig in. I got some, I think it's Diet Coke. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So one thing you guys should know about me, by the way, is that my pain tolerance, or not my pain tolerance, my spice tolerance is through the roof. So usually a two times spicy is still not spicy enough for me. So this right here should be a breeze, but uh, usually, you know, this stuff doesn't really get me. Now you guys, <clears throat> today was kind of tough thrifting. There was only one real thrift find of the day. And I wanna talk about that again here in just a second. But honestly, you guys, when it comes to thrifting, this year has been pretty tough. I think the only real, I guess you would say big thing we found were just like, I'd say like the Nikon L35 AF. So that was probably the best thrift find of the year so far. But even then, like a couple years ago, those were everywhere. So this right here, you guys, is the only camera 
that we were able to find today. And I know you guys have seen it in the episode today, but folks, this is the Nico Matte. It says weird. This is weird. It says Nico Matte EL. On some models, I see it say Nico Matte, but for some reason on this one, it says Nico Matte, which is a little odd to me. Now, the first thing I noticed was that, man, the camera is in amazing condition. I mean, everything from the body here on the backside all the way to the top. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it. It almost looks like it was preserved inside of a camera bag, but nobody bothered to take it out. Now, at the end of the day, we paid a total of 40 bucks for this. I think it was like $39.99, which for a thrift store is kind of steep, especially just considering what it is. But the main reason why I feel like I purchased this one today is because of the lens, man. Look at that. That's the 50 millimeter 1.4. Nikkor AIS and this lens is magical man if you put this on any mirrorless camera you can get some really really good images and the lens itself as well is in extremely good condition I'm honestly really happy with the purchase just because of the lens the lens itself is worth anywhere between 70 to 100 bucks anyways so the camera really was just a plus but you guys I was freaking out at first because I was trying to check the shutter speeds and I was under the impression that the Nikkor Matte EL cameras were all mechanical and that it probably didn't need a battery, but I was wrong. After doing some research, I found that you do in fact need a battery because there is a mechanical shutter, which is why it was firing, but the mechanical shutter is at 180th or excuse me, 190th of a second. Also looking inside of the viewfinder, it's really nice and clear. Honestly, you guys, like I said, this is probably the cleanest copy I've seen of this camera ever, at least firsthand. And what's really cool too, a little hit that I like is on the back side here, there's a little detail that says Nikon Japan. It has the serial number. And as you can see, it looks preserved. Like, you know, this camera has been pretty much sitting there for a long time. All right, I'm gonna set that down for now. But in this kind of next half, I wanna talk about some of the recent film cameras that I have been personally enjoying. And what's crazy is these film cameras are ones that you probably have seen me shoot this year, with the exception of one because it is still a new camera to me. Now, the first camera that I want to talk about is that camera in particular, the Pentax PC 35 AF. Now, this was actually a gift from the tattoo artist Ash Baroga. And you guys are going to see him a lot on the channel here because he actually shoots film. He's a photographer himself. That is my brother right there from another mother, man. He did my piece here on the arm, which I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. Traditional Japanese tiger here on the left arm. He does amazing work. So if you guys want to check him out, I will be leaving his uh, Instagram bio or Instagram handle down here so that you guys could check him out. But this camera, you guys, I've been shooting it now for the last maybe one to two weeks. And uh, it reminds me a lot of the Olympus XA. Very similar. The only difference I would say is the focusing. Obviously, this has autofocus. It has that Pentax PC autofocus. Um, whereas the Olympus XA, of course, is a rangefinder camera. But I love this thing, man. It's like it's like a switchblade knife. <laughs> now, sticking to the theme of point and shoot film cameras. That chicken is so good. <laughs> the other point and shoot that I have been shooting is the Nikon L35 AF. Here's a little close up of the camera. This is the L Touch, or what? What am I saying? Nikon One Touch L35 AF. Now, obviously, there were a ton of different iterations of the L35 AF. This one in particular, I've shown it in other videos, is a little bit funny because it's a little broken. So, once you turn the camera on, the shutter will not activate the camera. So, what you gotta do is you gotta give it a little bit of a tap. Once you hear that, usually you turn this back off, turn it on, and then you can still take a photo. Now the quality of lenses that these cameras carry, in my opinion, is some of the best in most film SLRs. This one, because it has a macro kind of function built in, as well as like the Olympus Stylus Epic, the Yashica T4, I would consider all within the same category. Very similar quality, very similar lenses. Uh, I think they're all 35 2.8s. And this has been a camera that I've been shooting a lot. I've just been kind of taking with me in my bag, just everyday carry. When I do shoot a lot of film, this is the one that I take with me. And as we are on the topic of Nikon, guys, the Nikon F3, this right here, hands down, if not one of the best SLRs ever made. 
it's hard to put it up against like the X700 because obviously on paper, as well as maybe shooting experience, the F3 is a lot better than the X700. But to me, the X700 always holds sentimental value because it got me started with film photography and made me more invested in shooting manual SLR cameras. And so the X700 will always take the number one spot on my list. But in terms of performance, man, the F3 is buttery smooth. I almost want to describe the shooting experience to be like somewhat like shooting like a Leica. But you guys, if you ever get the chance to try out the Nikon F3, it is a fantastic camera. Yeah, I think the F3 would be my personal vote for, you know, a premium SLR. Like if you were to get one this year in 2023, the F3 is the one that I personally would just reach for. You can still find them online for pretty good prices. And if you pay the money for it, it's not going to disappoint. It's a very, very solid camera. Bro, look at that piece right now. It's so good. Hmm. All right. And last but not least, you guys, probably the one that I have been shooting the most out of the bunch is this guy right here. This is the Canon QL17 G3, the $100 rangefinder build. Now, I made a video a couple of months ago. I went through a couple of bidding wars and I scored the QL17 G3 for like 75 bucks. Now, with that said, the light seals were bad and I had to kind of clean the camera up a little bit. But other than that, once I did the work myself, I had a perfect functioning rangefinder camera that not only has a 40 millimeter 1.7 lens that is super sharp, but it's also fully mechanical. So the battery that you would put in here would only operate the light meter. So what did I do? Well, folks, I went ahead and put on one of these external light meters. This particular one is from a company called Kex. I threw a lens hood on it. I bought a new strap for it. Like I said, I replaced the light seals and cleaned the heck out of the camera. And now this thing shoots like an absolute dream. I also have a Leica soft shutter release button there. Kind of like a gag, you know, cause it's a rangefinder and whatnot. <laughs> But guys, this is a very fun camera and for a build that you can pretty much put together under 150 bucks, it's something that I would definitely recommend. Anybody can do this, you know? And if you luck out and find one of these for a good deal, you can have a really, really fun shooting camera. Out of all the cameras we talked about today, personally for me, I would choose the Nikon F3 just because it's one of those cameras that are always going to outlast the next. You know, your 35 millimeter point and shoots, especially with autofocus, once those go bad, there's not many people that know how to repair them just because they are older cameras. And overall, I just feel like the Nikon F3 is just a far better camera. So guys, that is going to kind of wrap up the uh, <laughs> special edition episode, I guess. I don't know why I had this random idea to do this, but I thought it'd be interesting. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of, I guess the style of video, but also the find, I can't even say finds, the find that we have from today's thrift episode. But with that said, you guys, I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Drop a like down below and also hit that subscribe button if you guys are brand new and want to see more 35 millimeter film photography content. Until next time, this has been King James. As always, Minolta Gang.